In this lesson, we are going to discuss the Mirror Equation. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to predict the qualitative characteristics of images formed by spherical mirrors using the analytical method or the Mirror Equation. Ray diagrams do not provide us exact information on an image's characteristics since we are limited with the qualitative descriptions of images. For example, this object produced an image in front of this concave mirror. We know that this image is real, inverted, and reduced, but we do not know how exactly far it is from the mirror or the points unless the object is situated on top of a point. We also do not know how much the image has changed its size relative to the object. To quantify this information, we can get the actual measurements of the object and image relative to the mirror's point to have a quantifiable description of the image. We use the mirror equation to relate the object distance, image distance, and the focal length to each other. In this diagram, we will put an imaginary line tangent and perpendicular to the vertex to see the relationships of the values. The object has a certain distance of d sub o from the vertex. On the other hand, the image has a distance of d sub i from the vertex. As we can see here, we have created two similar triangles from the tangential segment. This gives us the relationship of the object distance and the image distance. This will be described by the equation 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over the focal length. This is again the mirror equation. Aside from this, we can also compute for the magnification of the image. We have defined magnification as the change in size of the image relative to the object. We denote the object height as h sub o and the image height as h sub i. As we can see here, we have again created similar triangles with the heights as the triangle base. This gives us the magnification formula. Here we have the magnification is equal to the ratio of the image height and the object height. As you can see here, the image height is negative. This is because the image here is inverted. This is also used for images that are upright. Aside from being directly related to the magnification, the image and object height ratio can also be used to describe the ratio of the image distance and the object distance. We can also write the formula in this form. In this case, we multiplied both of the height ratio and distance ratio by negative 1. But how do we know if the image is enlarged, same sized, or reduced by just looking at the value for the magnification? We need to remember some rules. The magnification may be negative, but that does not mean that the image is reduced. The negative sign indicates the orientation of the image. For the magnification, we need to look at the absolute value of the numerical value. The magnification will be in a base 1 comparison. This means that the image size should be compared to 1. If the absolute value of the magnification is equal to 1, the image has the size the same with that of the object. If the absolute value of the magnification is greater than 1, the image is larger than the object. And if the absolute value of the magnification is less than 1, the image is smaller than the object. Aside from these rules, we also need to be careful and knowledgeable with design conventions. For focal length, a positive focal length would mean that the mirror is concave. If this is negative, it is convex. For the image distance, if it is positive, it is real or that means that the image is formed in front of the mirror. Meanwhile, if it is negative, it is virtual or it is formed at the back of the mirror. For the image height, if it is positive, it is upright. If it is negative, it is inverted. And lastly, for the magnification, if the magnification is positive, it is upright. And if it is negative, it is inverted. To better understand this, let us try to describe some values. Here we have a radius of 28 centimeters. We didn't have any sign convention for the rule from the previous part, but this would help us determine the type of mirror form. Since the radius or the center of the mirror is twice the focal length, we can just simply divide this value by 2. Thus, we have a focal length of 14 centimeters. This focal length is positive. This means that the mirror is concave. Next, we have an image distance equal to negative 15 centimeters. Since this is negative, it is placed inside the mirror. This makes the image virtual. And we know that all virtual images are upright. 
next, for a magnification of 2.9, its absolute value would give us the qualitative magnification. Since it is greater than 1, it will be enlarged. Next, the sign of this magnification value will give us the orientation of the image. Since this is positive, it is upright. Lastly, all upright images are virtual. For the last example, we have an image height of negative 1.3 cm. This would not give us any information on the qualitative magnification unless the object height is stated. But we could get the orientation and type from this. Since it is negative, it is inverted. Automatically, it should be real because all inverted images are real. Now, let us discuss solving problems on mirrors. An object placed 15 centimeters in front of a spherical mirror formed an image 20 centimeters in front of the mirror. Identify the focus and type of spherical mirror used. Let us first identify the given. The object is placed at 15 centimeters in front of the mirror. This is our D sub O. It is still positive because any object or image placed or formed in front of the mirror is positive. Next, it has formed an image of 20 cm in front of the mirror. Thus, its image distance is 20 cm. We are going to solve for the focus first to determine the type of spherical mirror which was used. To solve this, we are going to use the mirror equation given by 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over f. Plugging in the values, we are going to have 1 over 15 cm plus 1 over 20 cm is equal to 1 over f. It is a common mistake to do the reciprocal on both sides immediately. We cannot do that yet because we still need to add the object and image distance ratio. We can do this using two ways maybe depending on your calculators or how you are going to solve this problem. First, we could just stick with the fraction format. 1 over 15 plus 1 over 20 is equal to 7 over 60 cm. Take note that this is equal to the reciprocal of f. This is when we are going to do the reciprocal of both sides. Thus, we have 60 over 7 cm is equal to f. Second, we can use the decimal format if our calculators do not have a fraction feature. 1 over 15 and 1 over 20 would add up to 0.1167 cm. This value is rounded off up to the four decimal placed values because this is not yet the final answer. And again, this is still 1 over f. To solve for f, we get the reciprocal of both sides. That gives us 1 over 0.1167 cm is equal to f. Both fraction and decimal solutions would result to a focal length of 8.57 cm. Since it is positive, the mirror is a concave mirror. Let us now look at the second problem. An, an automobile rearview mirror shows an image of a car located 10 meters from the mirror. The focal length of the mirror is negative 0.60 meters. Find the position of the image of the car, solve for the magnification of the image, and qualitatively describe the location, orientation, type, and size of the image. Let us do the first problem. This may be confusing especially when comparing the given and the unknown. It is stated that we need to solve for the position of the image of the car. That means we need to solve for d sub i. But the statement mentions that a mirror shows an image of a car located 10 meters from the mirror. This just means that it is the actual car or the object is the one positioned at 10 meters. This gives us d sub o is equal to 10 meters. The other given is the focal length of negative 0.60 meters. Again, we need to solve for the image distance. To solve for this, we need to use the mirror equation 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over f. To solve for the image distance, we need to isolate it from the rest of the equation. Since 1 over the object distance is added to it, we need to subtract both sides of the equation by 1 over d sub o. Thus, we have 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over d sub o. To solve for this, let us plug in the values. 
we have 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over negative 0.60 meters minus 1 over 10 meters. Again, we can have two ways here. Let us first solve this as a fraction. 1 over negative 0.60 meters minus 1 over 10 meters would give us negative 53 over 50 meters. But this is again equal to 1 over d sub i. Thus, we need to do the reciprocal. d sub i will then be equal to negative 30 over 53 meters. To solve this as a decimal, 1 over d sub i is equal to negative 1.7667 meters. We need to do the reciprocal for this. This gives us d sub i is equal to 1 over negative 1.7667 meters. Both solutions would give us negative 0.57 meters. Let us now solve for the second unknown. We need to solve for the magnification of the image. Thus, m is unknown. We have here our magnification equation. This gives us three possible ways to solve for this problem. But we need to identify and analyze which part of the equation should be used. Since we do not have values for the object and image height, we're going to use the negative ratio of the image distance and the object distance. To simplify this, we have m is equal to the negative ratio of d sub i over d sub o. The negative sign can be given to either the numerator, the denominator, or just before the fraction. Plugging in the values, we have magnification is equal to the negative ratio of negative 0.57 meters and 10 meters. We will cancel the unit for length. Thus, we have a magnification of 0.057. Rounding this off to two decimal place values, we are going to have a magnification of 0.06. With this information, we can now qualitatively describe the characteristics of the image. We have previously solved for the image distance of negative 0.57 meters and a magnification of 0.06. Now, let us identify the following qualitative characteristics. The qualitative location can be determined by the image distance. Since the image distance is negative, the image should have been formed in the mirror. The positive magnification value means that the image is upright. And since the image is formed in the mirror and since it is upright, the image is automatically virtual. And lastly, since the absolute value of the magnification is less than 1, it is reduced. Now, let us look at the last problem. A 12 cm tall inverted image was formed 15 cm in front of the mirror with a center of curvature at 16 cm. Find the position of the object and find the height of the object and describe the size of the image. Let us first identify the given quantities based on what was mentioned first in the problem. A 12 cm tall image is the image height, but it is also mentioned that the image is inverted. This means that the image height should be negative. Thus, we have h sub i is equal to negative 12 cm. It is placed 15 cm in front of the mirror. This means that it is the image distance. Thus, we have d sub i is equal to 15 cm. It is positive because it is in front of the mirror. Lastly, the center of curvature is positioned at 16 cm in front of the mirror. We need to solve first for the position of the object or the object distance. Thus, we use the mirror equation again. To isolate 1 over d sub o, we subtract both sides of the equation by 1 over d sub i. However, we do not have a value for the focal length, but we know that the focal length is half of the center of curvature. Thus, the focus is 8 cm. Plugging in the values, we are going to have 1 over d sub o is equal to 1 over 8 cm minus 1 over 15 cm. For the solution using fractions, 1 over 8 minus 1 over 15 is equal to 7 over 120 cm. This is equal to 1 over d sub o. To get d sub o, we do the reciprocal of both sides. This should be 120 over 7 cm. For the solution using decimal, 1 over 8 minus 1 over 15 is equal 
to 0.0583 cm. This is equal to 1 over d sub o. To get d sub o, we do the reciprocal of both sides. This should be 1 divided by 0.0583 cm. Both values would be equal to 17.14 or 17.15 cm. Lastly, let us solve for the height of the object to describe the size of the image. We have the magnification equation again. Since we need the object height, we are not going to equate the equation to m. We can just use the ratio of the image height and the object height is equal to the negative ratio of the image and object distance. From this, we can solve for the object height and compare it to the image height. To solve for the object height, we need to cross multiply the denominators first. Thus, we have the product of the image height and object distance is equal to the product of the negative image distance and object height. To isolate object height, we divide both sides of the equation by the negative of the image distance. Plugging in the values, we have negative 12 centimeters multiplied to 17.14 centimeters all over negative 15 centimeters. We will cancel one unit in the numerator and the lone unit in the denominator. Thus, the object height is 13.71 cm. To describe the size of the image, we will just compare if the image become larger, smaller, or if its size was the same with that of the object. Since the object height is greater than the image height, the image is reduced. Here, we discuss how to qualitatively describe the size of the image aside from looking at the magnification. To conclude this lesson, let us now review the following key points. The mirror equation is an analytical method to predict the qualitative characteristics of images formed by spherical mirrors. The mirror equation relates the object distance, image distance, and the focal length of the mirror. And lastly, Magnification is the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object. And that ends our discussion on mirror equation.